we would like to present a study that evaluated how a brief mindfulness-based intervention could reduce psychological distress in the workplace. Nowadays, many employees suffer from psychological distress, a mental health condition that leads to symptoms such as anxiety, depression, fatigue and stress, and to behavioral symptoms such as irritability and anger. In this study, the authors looked at employees working in a call center industry because they seem to be especially prone to experiencing psychological distress because of heavy workload, redundant tasks and lack of control over their work. Recently, mindfulness-based interventions have been integrated into work settings in order to reduce the psychological distress. The aim of those mindfulness-based interventions are to help employees cultivate mindfulness, which involves being aware of one's inner and outer worlds, including thoughts, emotions, sensations, actions, and surroundings. The Mindfulness-Based Stress Reduction Program is the most common MBI used in work settings so far. They are used for groups over a period of eight weeks and consist of weekly classes and one silent retreat. The participants are taught various mindfulness meditation skills such as sitting meditation, hatha yoga or body scan. They are also invited to put these skills into practice in their daily lives for at least 45 minutes per day, six days per week. The aim is to develop the ability to calmly step back from thoughts and feelings during stressful situations rather than engaging in anxious worrying. This program has proved to be efficient and effective in diminishing symptoms of psychological stress among various types of employees. Most MBIs, though, require an extensive time commitment from employees. Hey. This is a problem because this level of commitment might be discouraging for employees and they might abandon the program altogether. Shapiro and Al have pointed out that time-consuming health interventions in organizations can sometimes backfire as they end up putting more strain on employees. Also, many call centers operate in a fast-paced and competitive environment where every minute agents that are away from their desk could represent the loss of valuable clients. There is a need for interventions that do not add additional time commitment and strain. Therefore, a brief or low-dose mindfulness-based intervention have recently begun to emerge in the workplace. The overall length of this intervention is shortened and the number of meetings and the amount of practice time are reduced. They last four weeks rather than the standard eight and those interventions could also have a positive impact on other issues such as work and life balance, work satisfaction, leadership development, work performance and turnover intentions. In call centers, client satisfaction is a critical performance outcome. The influence of mindfulness-based interventions on client satisfaction remains unknown. There is evidence suggesting that call agents who receive mindfulness training might also be better at interacting with clients, which could in turn increase the satisfaction of those clients. Although from a conceptual standpoint, the relationship between mindfulness-based interventions and client satisfaction appears to be reasonable, it has not yet been tested. So the authors of this study propose four hypotheses. Mindfulness would increase from pre-intervention to post-intervention. Psychological distress would decrease pre-intervention to post-intervention. The decrease in psychological distress would be associated with gains in mindfulness. And lastly, that client satisfaction would increase from pre-intervention to post-intervention. This study, therefore, introduces a novel MBI specifically designed for call centers. They also assess the impact of the intervention on client satisfaction, a performance outcome that has not been examined in mindfulness research to date. It uses new research design as well and new statistical techniques, prediction analysis, which has never been used in mindfulness studies to their knowledge. 
their method. So how did Grégoire and Lachance conduct this particular study? The final sample included 43 employees of a call center of a financial institution in Canada. The sample included both male and female call center agents and managers, ranging in age from 26 to 57 years old. The participants were randomly assigned to two groups. In the first portion of the study, group 1 was the intervention group and group 2 was the control group. In the second portion of the study, the conditions for the group were reversed. The intervention group took part in a brief mindfulness intervention that consisted of 15 minutes daily audio sessions for five consecutive weeks. This included a 10-minute audio session in the morning before beginning work and a 5-minute audio session after lunch. The audio sessions included brief body scans and sitting meditation sessions created by a Buddhist nun. Employees listened to the session using a headset at their workstation. They were asked to turn off computer screens, move their chair away from the desk and close their eyes. They were also given a please do not disturb sign to put on office door or desk when listening. The following measurement tools were used to evaluate mindfulness, psychological distress and consumer satisfaction. The study revealed that the mean mindfulness scores were significantly higher after the intervention for both groups. The magnitude of this change appeared moderate and was more significant for group 1 participants, probably because they had a lower level of mindfulness at baseline and therefore more room for improvement. Mindfulness level also continued to increase for members of group 1 during the second portion of the study, even though the intervention was no longer being given to them. In the future, the use of a 6 or 12 month follow-up design would allow this hypothesis to be tested. The second hypothesis was also confirmed, where psychological distress decreased from pre-intervention to post-intervention. The levels of stress, anxiety, depression and negative effect and fatigue significantly decreased for both groups, showing that the intervention helped reduce psychological distress among participating employees. For the third hypothesis, psychological distress was found to be associated with gains in mindfulness, these correlations suggest that mindfulness played a role in promoting mental health through this intervention. The fourth hypothesis was harder to confirm, although client satisfaction did increase from pre-intervention to post-intervention. The mean of satisfaction was significantly higher after the intervention, however the effect size was small. Unfortunately, the data on client satisfaction gathered by the organization were aggregated, so client satisfaction scores for each employee were not available. But these preliminary findings are promising as they suggest that mindfulness training may change the way employees approach their clients. The study contributes to the field of mindfulness in the workplace in three distinct ways. First, from an intervention standpoint, they introduce a novel MBI that has several advantages over traditional MBIs. They're less time consuming, they're easier to integrate into their employees' regular work schedule without adding more strain and time commitment. It's convenient for those organizations that cannot afford to gather their employees in a training room for long periods of time, as it often the case is for call centers. They also added on a research standpoint, they assessed the impact of a brief mindfulness intervention on client satisfaction, a variable that was not previously considered in mindfulness studies. Although the impact of the intervention on this variable was small, managers found it relevant. In fact, client satisfaction within the call center had been stagnant for many years and they had made various attempts to increase it without success. 
For these managers, the extent of change in client satisfaction was thus important, meaningful and useful. The intervention made a noticeable differences in their everyday working life and the lives of their internal clients. This study also did contribute to the field of mindfulness in the workplace by methodological standpoint. The study uses a research design to pre-test test control group switching replication design and a statistical technique prediction analysis that is not frequently used in the mindfulness literature and opens new research avenues. There was no data on employees prior experience in terms of mindfulness meditation. There was only a small number of participants followed for a shorter period of time so there would be a need for a larger sample over longer time. Also, the sample consisted mainly of women from highly specific work environment, so there would be a need for more diverse sample. There is also a criticism on the mindfulness self-report questionnaire because there could be bias due to social desirability. And there would be the need to examine the effect of the experience of the instructor. Is an experienced meditation trainer necessary in order to make those mindfulness-based interventions a success? Thank you for listening to our e-lecture on the paper evaluation of a brief mindfulness-based intervention to reduce psychological distress in the workplace written by Simon Grégoire and Lys Lachance. Welcome to our e-lecture. In this e-lecture, we will talk about mindfulness in motion, a mindfulness-based intervention to reduce stress and enhance quality of sleep in Scandinavian employees, a study conducted by Mariana Klatt, Chris Noor, Brenda Reeder, Laura Jodis, and Susan White. Workplace stress can negatively affect an individual's psychological and physiological well-being and has been correlated with low work engagement and vitality, increased use of sick days and increased turnover rates. All of these outcomes have negative effects on individual performance and organizational health. Especially in large competitive businesses, stress can negatively impact workers. Although individual small-scale approaches like engaging in social support and increasing wellness factors can be helpful, it has been found that systematic and large-scale approaches by the organization are more effective, for example, mindfulness-based interventions. Mindfulness-based interventions are interventions that retrain the mind to modify its usual stress response to increase coping and resilience in the face of adversity. In general, mindfulness can improve brain function and structure, while also benefiting a variety of symptoms associated with conditions like anxiety, depression and chronic pain. However, these interventions can be time costly. Mindfulness in Motion is a mindfulness-based intervention that incorporates mindfulness, music and yoga in a time-limited fashion. The shorter time span does not compromise its effectiveness, since shorter mindfulness training sessions can be as effective as longer ones. Moreover, the addition of music and yoga add to the beneficial effects of the intervention. Music, for instance, allowed for a decrease in stress-induced arousal and a conditioned response that associates the music with relaxation. Finally, yoga is commonly used as a complementary treatment for physical and mental diseases. Using yoga alone even has shown to be an effective low-cost stress management technique to relieve stress and tension in the workplace. This study investigated the effectiveness of the Danish translation of Mindfulness in Motion and investigated the ability of this intervention to reduce stress while enhancing quality of sleep and work engagement in bank employees in Denmark. The intervention lasted 8 weeks and comprised 60 minutes a week. Participants were instructed to individually perform brief pre-recorded meditations, listen to music and engage in workspace yoga sessions daily. The research question was, 
is the Danish translation of the mindfulness emotion effective in reducing stress while enhancing quality of sleep and work engagement in bank employees of a non-American culture. The authors hypothesized that the mindfulness emotion could be extended from the American workplace to reduce stress and improve sleep to a foreign setting. Therefore, this study aimed to assess the effectiveness of translating an American English-based stress reduction program to the Scandinavian worksite. So, although Scandinavian countries lead the way in mindfulness research, the missing link lies in applying the research in an accessible manner that meets the needs of the general population, such as within stressful workplace settings. Why Denmark? One of the key components of the perceived effects of mindfulness in motion is the sense of community that is created among co-workers participating. Because this sense of community among Danes is strong, Denmark appeared to be a fertile worksite culture for this intervention. Participants of this study consisted of 57 employees, representative of working professionals in Denmark. The research design involved a randomized controlled trial. Participants were randomized to either the mindfulness emotion intervention or a waitlist control group. As males and females have been found to differ in their acceptance of mind-body practices, the groups were stratified according to gender. The intervention group consisting of 27 participants received eight weeks of mindfulness emotion by a trained instructor. The controls received no intervention during the study period. Mindfulness in motion includes reflective writing, community sharing among participants, mindfulness instruction and meditation, yoga and relaxing music. The structure of the 60-minute group sessions was, it, was as follows. It started with five minutes of some individual reflective writing in response to a prompt based on weekly themes, then 10 minutes of voluntary community sharing of reflective responses, then 15 minutes of didactic mindfulness meditation instruction, 15 minutes of yoga stretches based on a weekly theme, and finally 15 minutes of mindfulness meditation also based upon a weekly theme. Additionally, each participant received an mp3 play player with brief pre-recorded guided individual practice sessions translated from English to Danish and a form to record the daily home practices. Outcome variables were measured for both groups at the beginning, which is the baseline, at the completion of the intervention, which is eight weeks later, and nine weeks after the completion. The measures included the perceived stress scale, the Pittsburgh quality of sleep scale, and the Utrecht work engagement scale. While there was no significant improvement in overall work engagement, the Mindfulness and Motion group achieved significant reductions in stress and improvements in global sleep, subjective sleep quality and day daytime dysfunction, and they trended toward improvement in a subscale of work absorption. These improvements were maintained at least eight weeks after the completion of the program. This study examined the effectiveness of using mindfulness in motion, a stress reduction intervention originally designed for American work sites at a large bank in Denmark. In this study, the intervention participants attended eight weekly one-hour group meetings that combined mindfulness, yoga, music, reflective writing, and didactic lessons. This was supplemented with brief pre-recorded sessions that the participants could listen to on their own time and in their first language, which is Danish, to facilitate individual and daily mindfulness practice. The goal was to train participants to make these stress buffering activities, such as mindfulness, meditation, yoga and music, part of a long-term daily routine. The primary motivation for this study was to determine if mindfulness in motion could be extended from the American workplace to reduce stress and improve sleep into a Danish setting. Overall, mindfulness in motion succeeded in significantly reducing perceived stress and improving the quantity and subjective quality of sleep in the intervention group compared to the control group. Gains in the perceived stress survey and the Pittsburgh Sleep Quality Index were maintained nine weeks post-treatment, indicating that MIM was an effective workplace mindfulness-based intervention 
and that results could be extended beyond the eight-week intervention. Potential strengths of the current study include the randomized design of the intervention, the indicated generalizability of the mindfulness emotion intervention to a financial industry worksite, and the maintenance of results beyond the eight-week intervention. Due to the nature of the prospective controlled randomized design, this study was able to determine the causal effects of mindfulness emotion on Danish workers and eliminate many confounding factors. In addition, this research addresses an important gap in the literature and explores the maintenance of study results beyond the intervention period for a worksite MBI. Finally, the study results support that mindfulness in motion is an effective MBI that generalizes to populations outside the American worksite, and the benef benefits can continue to be seen even in populations that are normally considered stress resilient. Although the findings of this study had significant contributions to our knowledge of stress reduction interventions in the workplace, some limitations need to be noted. One of them is the small sample size, and the other one is the lower retention rate in the Danish group during the eight-week period compared to the American group, possibly because of differences in culture or work environment. For future research, the authors recommend to extend to a larger population of workers in a variety of countries and occupational settings, to delve deeper into reasons for dropout, to explore if results correlate to healthcare utilization costs or health status, and to correlate worksite stress reduction programs with important safety and error statistics. So how does this study contribute to our understanding of occupational health psychology? Well, the findings of this study are relevant to those responsible for the promotion of organizational worksite wellness initiatives. Managers and those in organizational leadership might use mindfulness-based wellness interventions to improve the health and well-being of their workforce. Secondly, changes in organizational culture may have more potential to improve health than do individual lifestyle modifications. Thus, by implementing mindfulness-based wellness interventions, such as the mindfulness emotion, organizations can encourage their employees to live healthier lifestyles. Thank you for your attention. Welcome to our e-lecture on mindfulness training and its effectiveness at work. Nowadays, media is full of the impressive benefits of meditating, doing yoga and exercising regularly. But are there actual effects behind this popularity? Let's see. In the next 10 minutes, we will tell you what Esther de Brun and her colleagues found in their paper about a stress relieving program, which was designed for employees and is called Mindful to Work. So why is this paper relevant to our understanding of occupational health psychology? For those living in Western societies, life is characterized by speed, time pressure, competition, an overload of stimuli and multitasking multiple roles. With this lifestyle comes stress. Work-related stress brings with it many negative consequences. Short-term consequences include headaches, flu-like symptoms, an increased heart rate and blood pressure. Long-term consequences include fatigue, burnout, anxiety and depression. With almost a quarter of European employees and half of US employees estimated to be at a point of burnout and 22% of the working population in the EU experiencing work-related stress resulting in a large negative impact on their well-being, understanding stress and how it can be reduced is more important than ever, especially considering the fact that these numbers are expected to increase in the future. It is also important to keep in mind the massive costs that disorders caused by stress have on society. So what is currently known about this topic? Yoga has been shown to help in decreasing the effects of stress by reducing the level of cortisol, controlling heart and metabolic rate and blood pressure. It improves strength and physical ability and promotes relaxation and sleep. Regular physical exercise enhances cardiovascular and muscular strength. It reduces rumination, decreases symptoms of psychological anger and stress and counters an overactive stress response system. Finally, it decreases symptoms of anxiety and depression. Meditation has been shown to be effective in improving overall mental well-being and self-compassion, treating chronic pain, anxiety, depression. It enhances cognitive functioning and immune functioning, while also helping rumination. What is this study about? 
This paper is a proof of concept study, which is examining the effects of a newly developed six week training program in which physical exercise, yoga and meditation are combined. The primary outcomes measured in this study include workability, stress related symptoms such as fatigue, lack of concentration, inactivity, lack of motivation, as well as return to work index. Secondary outcomes such as anxiety, depression, stress, sleep, and positive and negative effect were measured too. Feasibility and acceptability of the training were also assessed. While previous studies have only examined these factors separately, this paper is looking at them together to see their combined effect, therefore making an important contribution to research. This study was run with 22 females and 4 males and an age range of 26 to 60. All participants had work-related stress complaints. Of the 26 participants, 38 reported chronic physical complaints with another 38 reporting symptoms of mental illness. The measures were administered on four separate occasions. One week before training, directly after training, six weeks after training and finally six months after starting the program. There were a variety of measurements used to measure the primary and secondary outcomes. Workability was measured by four characteristics. Total score on the checklist individual strength, risk of long-term dropout, workability index and return to work index. Anxiety and depression were measured by the depression, anxiety and stress scale. General everyday experience of stress was measured by the perceived stress scale. Stress was also assessed by the stress subscale of the depression, anxiety and stress scale. Somatic complaints of stress were measured by the subscale of the four-dimensional symptom questionnaire. Subjective perception of sleep quality was measured by the Pittsburgh Sleep Quality Index. Positive and negative effects were assessed by the positive and negative effect scale. The data analysis consisted of repeated measures and OVAs with post hoc contrasts to test for the effect of time on all outcome measures. Effect sizes of the overall effects were measured, with pre-test scores being compared to the effects of scores at each of the four measurement points. Finally, correlations were carried out to assess relationships between the number of attended sessions, improvement to primary outcomes and intensity of practice at home. The intervention itself consisted of six weekly sessions of two hours each, with an additional follow-up session. Each session included 20 minutes of physical activity, which took place outdoors and targeted at all muscle areas, 20 minutes of a gentle form of restorative yoga, and 80 minutes of mindfulness meditation, which included psychoeducation. Sessions took place between 9 and 11 a.m., as energy levels are at their highest in the morning. All participants were asked to practice daily meditation and one to two sessions of physical activity and yoga per week. The time of 20 minutes of physical activity is the amount needed in order to reach a heart rate that will cause perspiration. So let's talk about the results. 89% of the participants followed 5 out of 6 or even all sessions. Only 3 participants dropped out before. Also, 25 out of 26 participants filled in both pre- and post-test measurements. On a scale from 1 to 10, participants rated the training with an 8.1. And when asked about their opinion about the whole training, they indicated that it was eye-opening, very pleasant and exactly what they needed. But they also mentioned that they felt that it was difficult to integrate it into daily life and it could have been longer. When asked which element they found most effective, 40.8% chose meditation, followed by yoga and exercise. However, only one person indicated that only meditations would have been sufficient. When asked what they are likely to continue in the future, 60% indicated that it would be the combination of the three elements, meditations, yoga and exercise. Right after the training and at both follow-up measurements, participants were also asked what changes they noticed since the training. The changes they mentioned most were that they slept better, had more energy, were more relaxed and less panicky, had more self-esteem, they paused more often, lived more consciously, were better able to accept and control their emotions and felt fitter. Almost all participants attributed these changes to the mindful to work training, but some of them combined it with some other kind of training or even reduced working hours. Let's look at the primary measure, workability. There was a notable decrease in the risk for dropout from work due to illness. A CIS score higher than or equal to 76 is considered a high risk. While prior to the training, 92% of the participants were at high risk for dropout, 
This number was reduced to 35% six months after the training. Also, for all of the four subscales, which are fatigue, motivation, activity, and concentration, very large effect sizes were found, all above 0.23. What's also really interesting is that all improvements even grew stronger weeks and months after the training. Looking at the work ability index, both physical and mental work ability increased. Another interesting outcome is that the percentage of contract hours that participants actually worked were just over 60%, but increased up to almost 90% within the period of measurement. You probably remember that there were secondary measures. What about them? The percentage of people that were above the clinical cutoff decreased both for anxiety and depression. For anxiety, it was 79% prior to the training, which was reduced to 39% six weeks later. This might be impressive, but note that still nearly 40% were very likely to have a severe anxiety after the training. Looking at depression, 33% were above the clinical cutoff compared to 13% six weeks later. Let's have a look at stress. 20% suffered from severe or even extremely severe stress, which could be reduced to zero after the training and could be maintained until the second measurement. Also, their sleep quality. Right after the training, the results showed an improvement on the PSQI, but as you can see, the graph rises again. This indicates a higher value, meaning a drop in sleep quality. There were also notable results for effect. While positive effect increased during the measurement period, negative effect decreased. So, to sum it up, all secondary measures showed at least some improvements after the training. What's important to mention at this point is that most effect sizes were very large. So, a potential reason for these promising findings might be that the mindful to work intervention taught participants how to shift from thinking what do I want, to listen to their bodies and ask themselves, what do I need, which helps them identify their body's limitations. Practicing mindfulness increased participants' ability to take a distance to internal events, like thoughts, feelings and physical sensations, as well as external events, and decide how they want to relate to them. The authors also highlight that mindful to work profits from the combination of the three elements that together have a synergetic effect, focusing on a healthy body as well as a healthy mind, and thus are able to target stress on multiple levels. An additional factor might have been that participants also spend relatively much time outdoors when doing their exercises, which has previously been proven to be beneficial to health outcomes. But, as with every other study, this also comes with some limitations. First, a third of the sample took part in other forms of training after the program, so we have to be really, really careful attributing long-lasting effects to the intervention. Second, there was no control group to compare the effects with. And third, the sample size was relatively small. It is also important to mention that the outcomes were mainly measured using self-reports. Participants might have indicated that they felt better because they knew they were expected to do so. Also. Keep in mind that some participants were still struggling with severe symptoms after the intervention. Maybe by now you have wondered, okay, that's all nice, but what's actually new about the study? To sum it up, it's the first study that combines all three elements, meditation, physical exercise, and yoga. Also, the authors could show that mindful to work has a low dropout and also larger effect sizes than most of the interventions in that area. Most of the positive effects in the study extended in the long term, which was not the case for similar studies. A meta-analysis by Ava and colleagues showed that positive effects actually diminished in the trainings they looked at. Last but not least, Mindful to Work has a relatively short duration. Many very effective trainings had durations of a few up to 12 months and were therefore more difficult to apply. Our study shows that it's possible to buffer the negative effects of stress on health, particularly when combining the three activities. Looking at the promising effect sizes, it could also be possible to prevent negative health outcomes. Also, psychoeducation, like popular workshops or trainings, are not as effective as actual practice sessions incorporated into daily life. This is a little wrap-up of what you've just learned, and we hope you enjoyed our little video.